All right, gather round and let me tell you about this wild tale that kicks off with a guy. Let's call him Steve, waking up in what looks like a prison cell. Now Steve, poor fella, he's got no clue where he is, how he got there, or what's going on. But hey, at least he remembers his name, Steve. So he steps out of his cell and who does he bump into? Another guy who introduces himself as, you guessed it, Steve. And just like our first Steve, this new Steve also has no idea what in the world is happening. Then, all of a sudden there's this big old door in the middle of the cells and it creaks open. Out of nowhere, some guy starts screaming and bolts straight for it. One of the Steves, let's call him Steve number one, thinks out loud, should we go for it? But the other one, Steve number two, shakes his head and warns, no, we should stay put. If we make too much noise, they'll give us the hose. Just as they're figuring out what to do next, they hear a bark. Yeah, bark. Turns out, there's a dog in one of the other cells. And what's his name? You got it, Steve. While the Steves are inspecting the dog, they notice something peculiar. Part of the floor is actually a conveyor belt, like a treadmill. Before they can fully process that, they see the screaming guy from earlier sprawled out on it, completely knocked out. And then from another cell, a voice chimes in, is he dead? But another voice, belonging to a mysterious muscular man in a different cell, answers, he's not dead, just stupid. Steve number one, curious as ever, tries to get some information out of the muscular guy, but this dude's tight-lipped. All he says is that he deserves to be here for the things he's done. Meanwhile, the knocked out guy finally comes to and starts babbling about some mysterious force behind those doors that attacked him and sent him flying back to his cell. Day two rolls around, and wouldn't you know it, the same thing happens. The big door opens, the same screaming guy rushes for it, and once again, he gets knocked out cold. He wakes up just long enough to call everyone cowards for not joining him. The muscular guy, he just shrugs and says, I'm not a coward. I'm something much worse. By day three, everything's still pretty much the same, but the Steves make a startling discovery. Everyone in this strange prison is named Steve Rogers. The dog, the muscular guy, the screaming guy, they're all Steve Rogers. But here's the kicker. They realize they're all Steve Rogers from different universes. Now as the days go by, it becomes a routine. Screaming Steve Rogers charges through those doors daily, only to get knocked out every single time. And day after day, the others just watch him fail. Screaming Steve grows more frustrated, eventually challenging the others. There's just one man in there. That's all that stands between us and freedom. What did you see? Get off your butts if you want to know, you bunch of chickens. By day 11, Screaming Steve is in rough shape, bloody, bruised, and barely standing. The others plead with him to stop, fearing he might die if he keeps trying. But Screaming Steve just snaps back. Better to die out there than in here with you gutless losers. And with that, he sprints toward the door again. But this time, Steve number one suddenly joins him. Both of them get knocked out, of course. What the hell was that? Steve number two asks when they wake up. Steve number one, still dazed, mutters, told you, couldn't even see it coming. But something's different. Steve number one saw something, and now he's scribbling something on the wall. When day 14 arrives, even the dog Steve Rogers decides to join the team. But again, they all get knocked out. By day 17, Steve number two is fighting a battle with his own mind. He wants to help, but fear keeps holding him back. Day 18, Screaming Steve confronts the mysterious muscular Steve, trying to understand why he refuses to join them. The muscular Steve admits he's not afraid of what's behind the door. He's afraid of himself. Finally, by day 19, everyone's fed up and determined to defeat whatever's lurking behind that door. Steve number one manages to convince Steve number two to join them, and sure enough, he does. But yet again, they all get knocked out. That's when the muscular Steve Rogers finally speaks up. Not a damn one of you knows what you're doing, but I'll give you this. You Steve's got guts. More than most. Maybe guts are enough. Maybe we're more alike than I thought. Now it's clear this guy is an absolute beast, a hulking figure with an American flag painted on his face, muscles bulging everywhere, and claws like Wolverine. Inspired by the others, he agrees to join forces with the Steves to finally take on the mysterious force. 
When day 33 dawns, the door opens, and all the Steves, dog included, charge through it. They're immediately met with an obstacle course and metal balls flying at them, but they manage to dodge and weave their way through. In the distance, they see five silhouettes. It's obvious these figures are the mysterious force that's been knocking them out day after day. This is it, says Steve number one. Be ready, there are five of them this time. What do we do? Steve number two, his fear finally gone, responds, this is our moment, Steves. The silhouettes quickly hurl something at them, and Steve number one, remembering what he'd been writing on the wall, shouts, raise your hands and catch it. It turns out Steve wasn't just writing, he was drawing. And now, for the first time in 33 days, the Steves finally manage not to get knocked out by the mysterious force. And here's the twist. They discover that those five silhouettes were actually Steve Rogers too, or, as we better know them, Captain Americas. You see, they've been testing every Steve Rogers they could find, preparing them, because a great evil is coming, and they need every warrior they can muster.